Hello everyone, welcome once again to Constantine Discussions. I am Captain Logan and here is Steve Baxi. Hey everybody. Steve, today we're talking about uh, an episode called A Whole World Out There. And before we even get started, I want to just straight away say I loved this episode. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I'm not sure if it was my favorite, but man, there are so many good ones, it's hard to pick. Yeah, well, I think conce on a conceptual level and on just like a premise level, this is absolutely my favorite episode. This hit me in all the right places. I'm such a yeah. big fan of alternate dimension stories and questioning reality stories and what's real and what's not. And, um, you, you know, if it's real enough to you but not to everyone else, does it still kind of count as real and all that kind of existential stuff? Um, boy, this, this nailed all that. I just thought it was super imaginative. Yeah, agreed. Um, everything we got at the end with Richie and Reach shaping that world and what Shaw was in that world, um, it was fantastic. Plus, it was a straight-up lost reunion, and I really enjoyed that about it. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Steve, give me your uh, your, your uh, uh, broad thoughts on the episode and a best moment and a worst moment, if you can come up with one. Um, yeah, so this, like we said, is fantastic. Um, I love everything we do with Richie, because Richie's in the comics, and we saw him, we saw him in the pilot, yeah. um, and there was a hint of they were going to do the eventual thing that happens to him in the books, um, but they don't, and they go a little bit of a different way with him, but it, it works out just as well, and I think almost better. Um, what do they do I, with I like him? What, he what do they do with him in the comics? Could you tell us? Uh, yeah, so in the comics, he's the kind of magician or wizard that can transfer his psyche into a computer. And so he's just always doing things in uh, the cyber world, and eventually he stays in there too long and his body burns up and he's just trapped there. Uh, oh, okay. And that's really cool. Well, and, and you know what? They totally, even though I didn't know, you know the comics, they totally had me at the end. I mean, like, like yeah. it really seemed like it was going to be another... Anybody John is around ends up in a horrible place or having to sacrifice themselves or something. And I think because of that thing we got early on in the season uh, where he manipulated a guy to end up being the big sacrifice with the whole possession thing and all of that, I think those, I, I think those kinds of events helped me totally not see the, the happier ending coming. Yeah, yeah, agree. Um, that is actually my favorite moment when... Um, John is trying to convince Richie to come out of the world because he would just be running away from his problems in the real world. Um, and there's a wonderful that moment of, is he self-indulgent when he wants to stay there, or is he optimistic and almost a new Messiah God kind of personality when he yeah. thinks he can make a new world there? And how different is it really from the world we have? Is it ultimately not better to just let him stay there? Uh, I thought all those questions were great. And part of me wondered if, was John convincing him to come back because he didn't want his friend to live a lie, or was he convincing him to come back because Manny told him that we might be able to use him if we can get his, get him to work on his powers again? That's a great point. I don't know. Uh, I think it's really hard. So I feel manipulated by John myself sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I love that about the show. Uh, I know that was, that was the best moment. Um, the guy that plays Richie, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. I didn't write it down, but he's great. Uh, did you Did you watch Lost? No, I didn't. Okay, he's in Lost. Uh, he is the um, he's Hawking's son. He's the he, he's he's the son of the big scientist lady. Of course, she's got to be named Hawking. Who knows who, who, who knows everything about time travel? Um, and uh, and and apparently a giant pendulum is how you time travel. Uh, is, is, yeah, Steve. But but uh, but but anyway, um, he, he is the perfect pick for uh, for a role like this because uh, he's got that whole kind of antisocial ADD super hyped up on caffeine thing going on. Yeah, uh, I love all this stuff with, like, I have solutions and he holds up bottles of pills and stuff, but he does all of these lectures through tape recordings. Yeah. Um, and the way he speaks versus how he records is so different. I all that fantastic. Yeah, and... Um, I do have sorry. a worse moment. You didn't have a worse moment? Yeah. This show is so sophisticated for those kinds of details. I mean, like, these the characters that we don't see for all that long are, are almost always... Well, with the exception of some, you know, um, people's wives, uh, there, there's, <laughs> there's uh, there, a lot of the time when, when it's when it's at least a guest star type character, you get all these personal details where uh, it fully draws a character, gives them personality quirks, it makes them really unique, uh, and that is so exciting to me. Um, my uh, 
my favorite moment in this episode was when uh, it was just the effect when Richie brings the sun to Shaw's dimension. Oh yeah, that was great. There was some almost like Kirby esque stuff. Yeah, especially with the way they designed the world, it looked really like Jack Kirby Asgard level. Uh, and I don't really have a worse moment. Uh, I mean, I mean, if if I want to just be like really superficial and only talk about special effects, uh, there's some green screen work that didn't look great, but um, inside the dimension. But you know, other than that, um, I uh, the kids, um, the teenagers that they were chasing were yeah. a little bit typical, except for the guy that knew what was going on. That's. That's fair. Uh, you could argue that they're playing around with a horror trope and they did it on purpose. Yeah, I, I, I totally get why they did it. It's just a matter of, like, I don't know. Uh, they weren't great actors either, and maybe that was on purpose too. Uh, we're still doing a lot of cool questioning of who's responsible for the consequences for the consequences of all this dark magic. Uh, you know, you know, if you if you are the enabler, are you responsible for it, or uh, is it or is it the person that actually did the magic in the first place? Um, I love how. Uh, hypocritical John continues to be. Every time he says something to Richie, uh, you can't help but think somebody should be telling you the exact same thing. Uh, this episode is all about self-indulgence, and it's really sad that uh, John is constantly torturing himself for and and supposedly on a road to redemption, but of course he's in a vicious cycle and he keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. So, not really. And I like like I uh, like he keeps doing making the same mistakes over and over again, and it's almost like he likes living in that place, even though he doesn't want to admit it and he doesn't want to think about that. Um, you you have the that wonderful book ended thing about how he's wallowing in his misery, and you get to the end, and that's that's where that hypocrisy is, um, where he tells, uh, um, he tells this guy uh, in the other dimension not to be indulgent like that and uh, run away from his problems. And then what is he doing at the at, at the very end? He's still wallowing in his own misery. Yeah. He, still, he still pushes everybody away. Um, this is all about the dangers of living in your own head. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of Nietzsche with that, too, of... Everyone behaves like they've got a duty to be unegoistic, they've got a duty to do things better, and a lot of people can't live up to that. And so they're stuck in this weird perpetual cycle of guilt yeah. and pity. And um, Richie finds a way out of it. Richie finds a way that instead of living up to a higher order that he knows he can't, he can just be the higher order and be happy. Um, and it doesn't work for him because uh, he has a responsibility in this world. And John's got kind of the same thing of, He's defying the order that's making people miserable by being miserable. And that's that's really sad. It's really complicated. Um, I feel like by the end of the show, and I, I almost feel like we're going to only get 13 episodes now. The ratings went down 11% again this week. Did they really? Um, yeah, last week it was up, and then this week it's low again. So I'm, we're almost certain it's going to get canceled at this point. But I feel like by the end of it, by the end of all 13 episodes, we're still going to get a really, really solid character and. There's a study to be done about this character. It's just so, so well thought out. We definitely have enough that you, you will be, will be, no matter what they do now, we can go back and really enjoy the show on, on, on repeat viewings and uh, look at a really interesting character study. I feel like it, it could end right now and there's plenty to talk about. Um, you, don't, you don't want that. Yeah. You hope that whatever they do in that last episode is enough of a series finisher. Um, I don't expect that the Rising Darkness thing will be over because I think it's likely... I don't see how you do that without it being really too fast, being five-minute wrap up beat. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what I'm afraid of. Um, and we'll see how it goes. It's possible that Netflix still picks it up. Yeah, I still think... That, I, I want to be optimistic. I still think that's likely to happen. Um, yeah. Um, I am really impressed with this show for how it continually studies John through characters that have dealt with him before and come back and he has to deal with them again. Like, like he has, you know, the past coming back to haunt you is a huge theme in the show, and we always learn more about John through the eyes of other people, both in the way they see him and also in the way they either mirror him or parallel him. And it's also pretty sophisticated storytelling because we rarely have to resort to flashbacks. Uh, you learn so much stuff about... Uh, uh, John's past 
just by having these people show up from his past and uh, him, him having to deal with them, and it never feels too convenient or gimmicky. Like, you know, okay, every... every um, like, like, instead of a freak of the week, we have a old friend of the week. It doesn't feel like that, though. Um, especially because a lot of the time, they're, they're set up once, and they play an important role, but they're not there for too long. You know, we did that with Papa Midnight. We did that with, with this guy in the, first, in the first episode. Yeah, and it, it really works that way. Um, we get a lot of great stuff with, like, these other guys that John used to hang out with enabled him so much that when they were able to turn away, he wasn't because he got so much influence. They had so much influence on him, and he had so much influence on them. The only problem is they didn't sell what he was selling, and he did succumb to what they were selling in the first place. Um, so eventually when we get, like, the whole story of what happened with the Newcastle crew and they do it um, the way they did in the comics, it's going to be kind of heartbreaking to see what John was, what he became, and whether or not his friends were responsible for it in the first place, and whether or not it's even fair for John to manipulate him the way that he did. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, what is your trivia question for this week? Uh, my trivia question is about Richie. So in the comics, for a little while, he takes over a demon's body. What demon is it? My question is about the reflective surfaces. Uh, we, all, all over this episode, um, you, if you look into a mirror or some kind of reflective surface, uh, it's a window into this alternate reality. My question is, uh, what reflective surface is John looking through that brings him back to reality from the dreamscape? Uh, I thought that was a really uh, vivid oh, yeah. and compelling image. And uh, so anyway, that's, that's, my, that's my question. Um, Steve, did you have any quotes? Show's always super quotable. Yeah, it is. Um, my favorite line was nothing especially deep, but I, I did think this was funny. Um, it's when John says, I'm well versed in the arts of pretending to be a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, I liked, I liked that one a lot, too. Uh, the best of them are always a bit cracked. Yeah. And, uh, and the, whole, the whole speech about uh, we're, we're cancer spreading our disease. Yeah, that was fantastic. Steve, um, what other places do you want to go to? We still have a few minutes left, and um, I've kind of mostly said my piece on this one. Yeah, the only other thing I want to mention on my notes is there was no Zed and there was no Chassis episode, and I thought we needed that. Oh, um, boy, I we got. Oh, oh, oh uh, I'm sorry. I, I like those characters, but considering how much progress we had with them the last few episodes, it's nice to just have John be by himself for a little while and see how he behaves by himself and see whether or not... The journeys they went, he went through with those characters, them discovering where they were, uh, their, where they were going, and um, their personal issues, uh, whether or not that changed him at all, and whether or not there's any touches of it still left. And it's fun to just see John be John for a while without indulging anybody else. Sorry, I thought I thought you were, I misunderstood you. I thought you, I thought you were going to say we needed those characters in this episode. I can't really imagine what role they would have played. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think we needed the break from them. Is what I mean. Yeah, sure. Well, and I like that this is not an ensemble cast show. Yeah, it's not like Gotham. It has, there's not that problem at all. And it doesn't have... Well, I mean, ensemble casts are cool. I mean, you can have those. I just feel, you know, this is a show w with one guy's name in the title. Uh, you know, it's 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 about him, and it's about um, again learning about him through the reflections of other people who 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 uh, who you know deal with him. So I like that he doesn't just have like one sidekick that always follows him around because what you run into sometimes with that, and and I, I just think it works better for this particular character not to have that is I uh, you either. It either becomes like a dual protagonist show, which this just, you know, probably maybe shouldn't be, um, or e the the other character is kind of just following him around, and you never really get get much about that. You know, you know, you know that 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 character is never fully drawn and just uh, is just there as a plot device for that person to have somebody to talk to. And I like that this show can like mix it up and not have them. Yeah, agreed. Um, it, it works, and it's really refreshing to just get straight up characters done week to week rather than being or manipulator plots that are always the focus. Even though that's what this is, we, we don't care as much about what the Rising Darkness is as much as we care about John having to go through the gauntlet of it. Yeah, the Rising Darkness is a conceit so that we have him having uh, some reason to be around and doing things again because starting him in an asylum makes so much sense. And him just roaming around after he's hurt so many of his friends... It would be hard to it would be hard to swallow that maybe, uh, and then the other reason is just so that you know you can make it episodic television. 
Yeah, and um, one of the things about those shows um, is you're always wondering, you're always like, get to where you're going. Um, the only reason Slade was interesting in Arrow was I want to see where he goes. Uh, the only reason I was interesting is because we want to see where he goes. Yeah. In this show, we got that thing, and I don't care about what happens with the Rising Darkness. It's satisfying, it's satisfying every single episode to just end there. Um, yeah. There's no, like, I can't wait for next week because I need more mystery and Good point. more character revelations. It's just the character stuff. Yeah, and it, I, I think the, the moral of the story is when you have a... When you want to make it a big, exciting mystery plot, you've got to have a plan. You know what I mean? You've got to have yeah. uh, at least at least a good skeleton of one. You've got to have a direction. And what's interesting is this show clearly does have a direction, but we're not watching it to find out necessarily all those mysteries. And because there's like a really complicated villain plot, and there's like a there's like a chess game and machinations and stuff. I love that when it's done well, but too often lately, what we've been seeing, I think, are a lot of shows. And I mean, I'm seeing this in even even other media too. Um, are are a lot of shows where that's an excuse, where that's kind of sorry, taking the place of real character-driven storytelling, and because they don't know how to do that, or they're um, or or we're just being kind of sloppy, you know, being kind of lazy. And uh, this show, I think, could actually totally pull off a big bad like that if it wanted to do one. Um, which yeah. is the really interesting, I ironic part, is that it's it's not doing that. Uh, I think anybody that likes this kind of thing, I mean, if you don't like a cult, you don't like horror stuff, then you know whatever. But it, but but like if if you um if you already you know might enjoy a thing like this because it's probably not for everybody, I think you could sit down and watch any single episode of the show except maybe the second part of that two parter and be able to sink your teeth into it. Yeah, agreed. Um, it's a crime, and nothing against Supernatural, that's a fine show, but it's a crime that that show gets 11 seasons, and we can barely get past 11 episodes. Um, considering the great quality of the character stuff, and whether it's doing everything Supernatural and Grimm and um, Once Upon a Time are doing, it's just doing them better, and for some reason, I'm watching it. Uh, it's, I don't need X-Files if I have this show. You know, you know what I mean? There's like, you know, you know, there's, 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 there's stuff like that. Uh, well, Steve, what is the answer to your trivia question, sir? Uh, the answer is he takes over the demon Nergal, who we are supposed to see in the show at some point. Oh, you know what? You talked about him before, and I think Eric has too. Um, oh yeah, I think he has. Uh, the answer to mine is uh, Richie's glasses. How interesting is it? That uh, that he has to peer into the eyes of this guy who's taken over this uh, alternate dimension and is making it his own in order to go back to the real world. Um, the 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 the, uh, the, Im the implications of that kind of an image it's like break your brain. It's really cool. Yeah, and I mean just the frame of it of John's reflection in the glasses were beautiful. Yeah, um, it's a really well shot scene. Um, I want to mention a couple other kind of fun notes really quick. Uh, my wife, uh, my, Sarah watches this with me, and um, she she said that she was reminded of the old game Quake, Qu you know, like Quake Arena. Oh, yeah. Because every time somebody would die in that house, they would respawn someplace else in the house. <laughs> that was, That's really cool. We thought that was pretty hilarious. Uh, we get to see John smoking again and actually yes. having a cigarette in his mouth. You notice that I guess where they've drawn the line is he can have one lit, but he can't take a drag. Have you noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be where we are now with the smoking thing. And that's satisfying because a lot of people wouldn't know the difference anyway. As long as he's seen smoking and we can eventually do dangerous habits, I'm happy. Yeah, because we can do a, an arc about it without without seeing him chain smoke all that much. Just it's just good that we've got that. Yeah. Um, I can't believe they convinced the they convinced them to let that happen. Yeah, they let him smoke, but they're still not sure about renewing the season. You know, like they're okay with fighting the censors, but they they still can't get funding for another season, which is really sad. Yeah, it's rough, but you know these things are super expensive and. Yeah, I, I mean, I almost feel like you could cut its budget and the show will still be just as good. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, I guess that's going to be it for us, unless you had any final thoughts on this one, Steve. Uh, no, just please, people watch it. William Shatner live with it every week. So oh, that's cool. That do, I don't know who else does. <laughs> wow. I, I wouldn't have thought this would be Shatner's bag. That's cool. Um, he just latched on to people saying save Constantine and says, okay, well, let's help it out. And he just live tweets it every week now. He's been doing it since the mid-season finale. Have you have you read any of his tweets? Like, is he in, is he like into it or? Yeah, he really likes it. That's awesome. Um, 
Yeah, I didn't think he'd be his cup of tea, just considering what little I know about him. That's so cool! Well, if it gets another season, I bet they could get him to guest star. That would be so cool. <laughs> I, I would not be surprised if they didn't go after him uh, if, if he's if he's really if he's really pulling for it. Uh, and he's done plenty of you know TV guest star things in the last several years. And obviously you know he started in television, so I, I bet it wouldn't be hard to get him to do to, to do that at all. Um, also interesting that it's NBC. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, everybody, thanks as always for watching. We sure appreciate it. We'll see you again next week for more Constantine. And maybe not much more after that. Ugh, yeah, but, we got two episodes left. But this has been very exciting to talk about. Like I said, I don't know. I think at least premise wise, this was my this was my favorite. Um, I I kind of want to go back and watch it and rewatch it again. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you next week. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Steve. Matthew. See you later. <laughs>